this game was played against uh, uh, Gaiola Sax. And Sax was also, this game was played in Budapest for the Hungarian Championship in 1973. Gyula Sax is also a pretty famous Hungarian um, chess player who you'll see in quite a few of the uh, 60s and 70s events. So we might feature him someday. But I really liked this game against Gyula Sax because uh, it features some amazing attacks. So the big sax attacks, right? Uh, so sax played pawn to e4, and Farrago playing the French defense, pawn to e6. Then pawn to d4, On a d5, knight to f3, or c3, and bishop b4, the um, vinegar, and the advanced. Knight to e7, pawn to a3, bishop takes with check, and b2 takes the bishop. Pawn to c5, knight to f3, and queen to a5. Pretty normal French defense stuff here. Bishop to d2, and bishop to d7. Bishop to e2. And we've mentioned before, sometimes you can put the bishop on d3, provoking the c4 pawn push, and then tuck it back onto e2. And the whole idea is to lock up the center and lock in the light squared bishop. Well, bishop to a4 is played and white castles. And now the advance is played without provocation. There's no reason to try to capture here and expose your own queen to attack in this position. Sometimes that exchange in the center is made, usually when there are knights on f5 and c6 but not here. Now knight is played to g5. h6, forcing the knight away. And of course, the whole purpose of knight to g5 is to push the f-man so going back to f3 would be a waste of time, so you can guess where he's going. h3. So now knight b to c6. And there's the pawn push that we expected. Castling to the queen side. And here comes the idea of trying to storm your pawns. Now, with the king castled over on the queen side, this can be real risky because you're exposing your own king with these pawn pushes. With same side castling, this is going to be a little more normal. With opposite side castling, well, Let's just say there's some risk involved. Pawn to f5. 
I mean, black does not mind at all opening these lines with his king over on the queen's side. So here we have an en passant capture. In case we have any beginners in the room, let's go again over en passant. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but some people are not familiar with the rule. When you have a pawn three steps from home, as is the E pawn, and your opponent moves his pawn from home, as did Farago here, playing pawn from F7 to F5, you can capture that pawn as if it only moved one square with your E pawn. It's called en passant, in passing. You must do it immediately following the opponent's move adjacent to your pawn. If you do something else, you can't do the en passant capture later on. So G takes F6, and by the way, it is recorded. Even though the pawn is standing on F5, this move is recorded. E takes F6, where the attacker finished his move. So G takes F6 and now F5. And you can see now we've got a weak pawn supported by the queen and bishop, but it's going to be a target nonetheless. A half open file with the king standing on it begs black to play his rook to G8. I mean, it's just an invitation to get in line with your opponent's king. Now, before he does that, however, he plays pawn to e5. And white already beginning to try to reposition his pieces toward the king's side, plays bishop to e1. King to b8. Queen to c1. Knight to c8, d takes e5, f takes e5. So white hoping now to do something with his pawns. We're still waiting for rooks to come over to the g file and attack. Well, white obviously anticipates that is going to happen, plus he's got a wide open diagonal from a7 to g1, so he slips his king over to h1. Knight repositions to d6, and here's g5. And you can see from the evaluation bar, which I've yet to figure a way to disable the evaluation bar, so we use it for clues. When that thing moved, we look to see what was going on with the move that caused such a shift in the evaluation. H takes G5. Knight takes G5. And Rook to from D8 to F8. Now, it just seems like the king here is more, much more vulnerable than the king here. So you might call this a king safety imbalance. Pawn to F6, white's entire hopes rest on this advanced pawn, it seems. Black needs to be getting his pieces in the direction of the king's side of the board. Pawn to d4. Well, that creates one avenue. Hello, Crucy96. 
welcome to the chat room and to the program. C takes d4, and there's the check. Bishop blocks on f3. And now pawn e4. Knight takes, poising for a discovered attack. However, that's going to be impossible because black has two attackers aiming at e4. And white only has one defender. More attackers than defenders, and you know you can overpower. Amazingly enough, Farago does not overpower the knight. Instead, he captures the pawn on d4, creating a new attacker on f3, so that if the knight moves, then the, pawn, the knight on d4 can attack the bishop and capture it. Well, bishop played to g2. And this, I mean, the game's already pretty interesting with this wide open exposure of the, the white king. But there is one little thorn in the mix keeping things um, obstructed. So Black's solution is to simply give away his rook for a pawn. What a clearance sacrifice this is. Rook takes h2 check, and to me this is really one of the great moves of the game. But it's going to be punctuated, so don't go anywhere. After the king takes and the other rook steps into h8 with check. Bishop blocks on h3, and guess what, ladles and jelly spoons? Here comes the next sacrifice. So two rooks are given away in exchange for a bishop and a pawn. But here's the white king standing. Look, the, his closest defender is two files away. He stands in the Emperor's new clothing. He has absolutely no protection. Bishop d7 check. And keep in mind, look where white's pieces are. They're not close to the king. This rook will never be in the game. So it might as well not be on the board in, for all practical purposes. You look at it from those terms, you realize um, that one of those two rooks you're compensated for when you consider that your opponent's rook is completely out of play. Well, right here already, White resigned. He realized it's hopeless. He doesn't have anywhere to hide. He's completely exposed. When he gets out of check, the, the white resigned here. Let's look at the continuation that could have happened. He could have gotten out of check. And here's a new check. And after king to g1, well, you already have a fork here that can be played with check. And, but, king to f2 here, the queen protects the knight, so bring in another attacker. Knight takes knight check. Don't have to take the queen. So after king to e3, then you can take the queen. Well, now materially, we, we're speaking a different um, language now than we were a moment ago when the two rooks sacrifice themselves on h2 and h3 respectively. So you can see white had good reason to resign. Okay, what is left after king takes knight on e4? Well, 
now you have this fork as well. And now the material is well in White's favor. Okay, you've got a queen against a rook, but it's just going to be a matter of cleaning house from here. So king c4 could have been played. And then we've got these pieces on adjacent diagonals. Queen f3 check could have been played here. And it's just going to get from bad to worse. Um, where to put the queen d5 perhaps. I mean, there's no direct line, but black is going to win this, obviously. You could skewer <laughs> and just get rid of the other rook as well. King f2, perhaps. It's just, it's just a matter of denuding your opponent until he just has nowhere left to go. Of course, keeping your pieces together and only one square here that can be played to. And you can play this fork as well. <laughs> Even if the king were to try to protect, we simply play queen to e2. And then you could clear out all of your opponent's pieces. And from here, I think even a caveman could win this game. King d4, queen d2 check, king e4, queen takes c2 check, King f4, queen f5 check, king e3, queen f3 check, king uh, d4. Um, what's the fastest checkmate from here? I mean, there's no need to pick off that last pawn. Maybe bring in your king to stop some progress as well. King e5, perhaps. Um, well, you either have to just assume he stays toward the center of the board. Bring your bishop a touch closer. going to move your king it's going to be to well let's say he moves here you just back it up back it up a square and if he moves back assuming he wants to stay toward the center well now you have queen d3 check and there's only one move left and wait a moment not checkmate, but how about here? Queen d6 is a crisscross checkmate. That'll take care of it. Checkmate. 